so magical here. It is. Yeah, she's they're coming, they're right there. Oh, there they are. The door's open. Hi, hello. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Yeah, yeah, great to see you. Hi, hey. 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 I forget you're hey. tall. Hi. A oh, short people here. Hey, Marilee, how are you? Good. You're the camera girl, yeah, huh? I'm, yeah, <laughs> our, our cameraman canceled on us today, oh. so. Wouldn't you know it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Marley is really good with the camera, so. Very good, very good. Awesome. Um, is there a place I could set this backpack? Sure. Anywhere? Well, pro probably here. Okay, yeah, that filming. one's like a good yeah. yeah, you can grab that anytime. Yeah, let me throw that radio up. Yeah, yeah. I have coffee or iced tea? Yeah, there's also... It's pure coffee, oh. so I could just make it for you. Or it's mint iced tea, Co I'm sweet. Coffee sounds great. Okay. I think iced tea sounds good. Marley says iced tea sounds good. great. Good, <laughs> because I have this full picture. Awesome. Like well, if it's, easier, it if it's easier to do tea, we could just do no, tea. No, no, no. Coffee is so easy. Okay. Yeah, I'll make some. Man, Hilmar, it's been a while since yes. you've been here. Yes, it's true. I yes. love this space, yes. though. This, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It, uh, it really ingrained in my mind last time I was here. Yeah. And uh, I feel like uh, it's like an iconic, one-of-a-kind well, space you got here. I love it. it, it yeah. Well, we, we both also, I mean, we, you know. I don't want to go anywhere else. You know, from the house here, and that's back and forth. Just so back and forth. That here. could be it. That could be. We walk to the I mean, house. We walk totally to yeah. work. That's great. I you have didn't the, see this I one. No. What is this? This was uh, the work of last summer. This was I last started summer. in July and finished in October. I didn't do anything else. July, it was a October. big, a big tree uh, from the neighborhood. Uh -huh. uh, red maple, and it had this natural layer on the outside and this, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of protrusions. This was a gift from the tree. I didn't even touch it. Oh wow! So it's just amazing. Wow. And so I spent all my time for four months on the, uh, with this with this tree. So uh, finally. So you go in with like a saw? Uh, well, a, a with drill. Dr drills. In fact. Three quarter inch drill is, I think, the biggest I could uh, manage, and deep long, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. I snapped two drills that broke in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that got stuck, you know. It just uh, wouldn't turn and, and snap, and then I had to chisel them out because otherwise. Cream, sugar. Uh, yeah, cream sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that was really. Uh, where did you get the idea to do, uh, what was your first wood carving? Where did you get the idea of uh, carving with that? I was a small child when I did uh, my own toys. I made my own toys whittling. No, -uh, really? As, a, as, a, as an infant, you know, plenty scars to prove. So you, your <laughs> so parents I, I was would always, let you have a always playing, I mean, you know, uh, we grew up in a, in an Austrian mountain village, oh, thank you. and it was uh, after war time, so there were no shops and no nothing, you know. Uh, so so we had to entertain ourselves in, out in the, in nature, and my grandma's farm was where I literally grew up. So first a, first six years. American kids don't know nothing about making their own toys. <laughs> well, I, I was always fascinated in uh, in boats and and water, you know, and so I I, I made all these little little boats and played in the water mm -hmm. with it. And so said, until I grew up and went to Greece and you know bought my first boat and then a big boat and so forth. So then I that dream became reality. When I started to study in Vienna. Uh, in order to, uh, you know, support myself, I had to find a job, and I found a job in a, uh, a sort of orphanage. 
mm-hmm. uh, as, a, as a supervisor or, or as a counselor. And uh, the kids uh, were uh, from the age of, I think, 6 to 18 or somewhere even older. And we, we, we had to make sure that they did their schoolwork and, their, and they ate all right and they polished their shoes and brushed their teeth and so forth. And uh, I had, uh, during the day the kids were in school, so we were free to go to the academy and study and to the university. And in the, uh, in, in, uh, on the, sometimes we had a free weekend, I would do art work for myself, you know, from, and we had an interesting pear tree growing in the garden on the grounds of the building of that place. And I couldn't uh, resist one day and I took a saw and I sawed off a branch <laughs> and carried it in and that was my first wooden sculpture I ever did. I made a sort of a, a crucifix out of it, you know, a mm-hmm. figure in it uh, on, a, on a cross leg. And I got in trouble because uh, uh, I, you know, cut the tree <laughs> practically. <laughs> so what and happened? What happened when they... When they got you in trouble for cutting the Well, I mean, they they ended up with the piece on the wall, you know, in there, in there. Oh. The, didn't you give it to the, the yeah, teacher, the, yeah. the, the friend Dorothy. that we know, to Dorothy? Dorothy, uh, yeah. the housekeeper, I mean, the, the, the manager of the, was a Swiss lady, and the director was a German uh, Protestant minister, and they eventually got married, and uh, when I left that place, uh, they I, uh, they got the, the sculpture. And uh, Penny saw it uh, when he yeah, had a show in yeah. Vienna mm-hmm. the last time. Yeah. And we went to visit it, uh, visit this lady, yeah. and uh, uh, she came out and you know sho- showed showed, it, yeah. showed all the works she had gathered from uh, uh, my brother and myself. My brother also painted. In those days, and in fact, we couldn't. She could not uh, remember who painted it, whether it was me or my brother. And then which I explains saw, that his I, name is uh, yeah. not his family name. No, not I, his I, I chose the village name uh, because his separate. father painted and yeah. his brother painted, yes. and then it was confusing yeah, yeah. that the name family name was Fister, yeah, yeah. and that was why she was holding the painting and didn't was, know for sure which was one real was puzzle. which I mean, Fister. So who painted it? Did my brother do it or did I? And I didn't quite remember, it. but then I did remember the difference in the style. My brother is more uh, edgy, mm-hmm. more linear, and more harder in the lines. I'm more smooth, you know. I, yeah, I write the way. Do you do you ever look back at a piece and uh, be like, wait, I did that? Do you ever look back at a piece uh, from a long time ago? And, it, and it, it, yeah, of course, yes, yes. Because having yes. have done so many pieces, because you yes. number your paintings, right? Uh, I numbered them when I when I saw after my first shows in Vienna, mm-hmm. uh, and I sold, and then they were gone, you know, and I, I didn't quite remember what I had done. Mm-hmm. So when I got started uh, as a professional in Istanbul. I started numbering every piece, mm-hmm. so that from then on I, I am now at fifteen hundred thirty-three. And these are so, pieces that you're putting a lot of time into. Uh, well, th- those are serious, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that I consider artworks. Uh, I've done many, many other things that were gifts, or you know, at mm-hmm. weddings, or at uh, birthdays, or or Christmas cards, or whatever it is. Those I don't number. Do you do uh, like a lot of study drawings and like little sketches that you don't never? Remember? Never, 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 never. I, uh, uh, you know, first of all, the material was so precious, the paper and the canvases, uh-huh. that I, I said, you mustn't make a mistake, you mustn't mess it up. You do it until it's done, and then you get the next one. And I do this still up to this day. Wow. So it's, uh, I cannot do two pieces at the same time. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I, you know, kind of single-minded, uh, focused on one thing. And that's, that's been the story of my life, really. Yeah, when I, whenever I go to uh, do pieces, I sometimes I'll get carried away and yeah. do so many study drawings. Uh-huh. I'll feel like, oh, well, the piece already exists in my yeah, mind, yeah, and then I won't have the motivation to go right. paint it. And what then is it'll it? be... Uh, I mean, uh, this is what I, what I do. I, I paint it, you know, in my mind uh, until I know what I'm going to do next. 
Mm -hmm. And only in my late age nowadays, uh, I find some blank spots where I say, what do you do next? And then I sort of play around with uh, ideas and then until something solidifies, and mm -hmm. then, I, then I do it. Yeah, uh, you didn't ask how he figured out what name yeah. he would paint under. Oh yeah. Yeah, how did you uh, figure out that? Well, <laughs> well that's, that's true too. Uh, I chose the... Can I set this here? Is yeah, anywhere. Okay? Sure, of course. I chose the, the village name were by dad uh, and my, my mom. Uh, but dad was in the school business also. He was a headmaster of an elementary school. And his last post was in the village where he then came one day and said, called us kids over and said, would you like that I buy a car or would you like that we start building a home, a house? And the kid said, house. And then dad said, well, but you will have to work for it too. You will, you know, shovel mm -hmm. and, and learn to trade and stuff because... I yeah. forgot to tell you when you ask him, he yeah. starts at the day he oh, was and born. I, and I know the stories go on forever. <laughs> but however, <laughs> we managed we managed to build uh, this home, and that became the first family home we ever had. And it was in the village of Gottestal. Gottestal, Gottestal which has a very poetic, nice name, God's Valley, Valley mm -hmm. of God. Oh wow! And it's it's nice? by a river that uh, makes a sort of a snaky uh, curve in the middle of, no, you know, countryside, mountains on either side and all around. Yeah, I've asked Jolar, uh, would he like to go to yeah. paint? Yeah. And he gave it some thought and he oh, yeah. said, my back deck. <laughs> so he loves it right here. Oh yeah, nowhere else. I mean, this is, it, it's really perfect, my goodness. You, you know, you have the peace, you have the animals, you have the, the wildlife, you have the, mm -hmm. the nature. Whenever you were young, getting your career going, did you have a successful career from like very young, or was it uh, like? No, a... well, I was uh, lucky to get a scholarship from the Austrian government to uh, go uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. Choice was London, Paris, uh, Rome, and I said no. I want to go to Istanbul, and they all said. How come nobody has ever asked for that? And so there was a big discussion and I got away with it. And I, I was I was going to Istanbul and I had a monthly salary, you know, it was uh, just fantastic. I did have to go to the Turkish Fine Arts Academy to sort of uh, show what I was doing to the to the mm -hmm. students there and talk about my work and my, my doing so. But, that was limited because I didn't speak Turkish and uh, my English was bad. <laughs> so I made it easy for myself. I said, I give myself three months, I will go home and I'll paint like mad. And then I show what I did. And then we talk about those things. So did you learn anything so, from the school in Turkey? Uh, well, I, I learned a lot in Turkey from the environment, you know, the museums, the history, the architecture, the Byzantine world, the churches, and it was unbelievable. He wasn't studying in no, Istanbul, he no, was hired to teach. I was, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. I was giving it. Was he I had was, already graduated from the Vienna had, Academy had, of the Arts. I had finished oh, okay. uh, in, in so Austria. Yeah. What, were, what did you learn when you were in the Vienna Academy of Arts? Uh, well, anatomy was interesting. Uh, everything, I mean, from, from color chemistry to uh, architecture to anatomy was really very strong of course mm -hmm. we, uh, we we were forced to draw models for three years and only in black and white which was torture because i wanted color all, all my life you know i was always interested in color mm -hmm. so uh, uh, i got away with that by going home and then painting with colors at, at home and then uh, uh, then I couldn't stand it anymore, so I got my colors and I painted not black and white anymore. I didn't do drawings, but I painted. And the professor came in and said, uh, what on earth are you doing? And I said, well, I'm painting. You can't do that. You ruined the rest of the class. Get out of here. She gave me a, a chamber 
uh, where they had stored uh, things, you know, for the for the. They put him in a closet. In a closet <laughs> and said, "Don't come out. You can paint and do what you want in there, but don't, don't ruin the class." Yeah. So I was free. Nice. I could do what I was was doing, and the the, the professor was enthused, and I got a, a big prize at the end of my my studies. Okay. Countries like Greece and Turkey, you know, antiquity. Antique cities built out of marble and mm -hmm. ruins, and so uh, you could I could see you know statues everywhere, in all the museums, and uh, I was fascinated by the idea how on earth did the Greeks make those sculptures? They didn't have steel, they they had very primitive tools, and they made they built cities out of marble. So I uh, sat on the beach found a, a rock of, of a piece of marble, used a screwdriver from, from the, the toolkit, sharpened the edges and the hammer a little, and, and started my first little wooden, uh, stone sculpture and, and had a wonderful time. And, uh, and then I, I, was, I was hooked on. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to uh, find the marble at? Uh, well, uh, when I lived in Greece, I went to Athens, mm -hmm. uh, to the quarry of uh, the of antiquity where where the Acropolis marble came from, Mount Pentelicon, and uh, uh, there is one uh, marble sculpture over there which is on that that quarry uh, that came. That's that's the same material as the Acropolis is made of. Wow. So it's it's really very thrilling, mm -hmm. and this one came from another antique antiquity quarry from the island of Paros. Parian marble was famed all through history because of this very dense uh, material. You can see mm -hmm. it, you, know, you, you can feel it. It's, uh, it's like crystal, it's like, uh, like glass. Yeah. And uh, so, so I, you know, with, with my, so I got some chisels and I, but only, only hand tools uh, in those mm -hmm. days. Where do you get your marble from now? Uh, well, I only got one piece and this is, the only one I did here in the last 20 years. It was a gift and from was another a gift artist. From, uh, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I, this one looks like it's sparkly almost. It's a little different, sparkly, mm -hmm. because the crystals are much bigger. Mm. This one is very fine and dense, this one is soft. Is the soft easier uh, to work with? It's easier to work with, but also it gets dirty when you put the hand on it because it takes the oil. So mm -hmm. Penny always comes and says, don't put, don't touch this one, but you can touch this one. Uh, and th this is, uh, of course, a, a different, different story. Uh, I was listening to music, I, I always do when I work. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, it was uh, Bach Partitas played on the cello mm -hmm. by Vistislav Rostropovich. Uh, uh, an old Russian musician who lived in DC and gave a concert. He started playing Bach after he was 60 years old and is one of the best cellists that ever existed. And he filled, filled this room, I mean, here with, with his cello. And I was and completely wiped out. I thought, oh my God, can you, you know, how could you freeze this music and leave it in this room forever? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, uh, if you, uh, you know, and I had just been given this marvel and I thought the purity of that music mm -hmm. by its tone, I thought if I condense it, press it together in a, in a package uh, and, and uh, try to come to the Bach feeling. And so this is what came out of it. It has a very much of the movements and the counterpoint ideas and the and the rhythms of, of, of Bach. So uh, with a little tongue in cheek, I call it Bach in a block. He's one of my favorites mm. to have playing in the background while making yes. music. There's something yes. about that where that's yes. one of the easiest ways to get into the flow state is true. to have some music playing oh, yeah. in the background. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, very true. I mean, I, I catch myself, I play a lot of uh, public radio, you know, West Virginia mm -hmm. station, they have good classical music and the Frostburg uh, station. And uh, I catch myself often, I start with the music, listen to it, and then before you know it, you don't even 
hear it because I'm painting, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm off into that. Do you have but different the, types of music that you use for different types of pieces? Uh, or, um, well, I am fond of classical music because mm -hmm. that's been my, my background too. I used to play viola a little bit and a little bit of piano and so uh, we were trained as, as kids. In, so your, your parents had you trained in painting? Well, uh, well, well, not necessarily trained you in painting, but they had you painting, drawing, music, uh, all different types of uh, stuff. Well, sort of. My older brother, who was mm -hmm. only a year and a half older, was the genius in the family. He was the talent. Mm -hmm. And he was sent to art classes and courses, and he learned. Uh, and I was the little kid that I was always looking and wishing and dreaming to also do what he could do. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, naturally, I think, stretched myself to try to, you know, follow him. But I never, I never did, uh, uh, you know, have my own color sets or my, my, my own things. So I, I, uh, I was more into carving, mm -hmm. uh, making wooden things. And uh, later on, when I uh, started with the, you know, getting, when I got accepted in the academy in Vienna, uh, it was a, a real breakthrough for me because then I was becoming an artist. Uh, my brother stopped being the artist that he was. He went into teaching. Uh -huh. and was I, he teaching art? Uh, art, yes. Uh -huh. uh, and I was in in a freelance, uh, you know, artist. So then you've been you've done that pretty much your whole life. Then, I right? did that all my life. Yes, yes. I was very lucky to get away with it. Wow. Uh, um, started in Istanbul. I was given that grant for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, the year went over and I went back to Vienna and uh, went to the ministry people and said, would it be possible to get another year extension? This is was very, very useful. And they gave me another grant what for was another second year. It was a, a sort of scholarship for... Uh, uh, internship. Uh, internship for, uh, for gifted students yeah. or gifted kids. What was it about Istanbul that you wanted to go uh, to there? What fascinated me was the Byzantine world. Not so much the archaeology that came later. But the Byzantine art uh, had been an, an enigma for me because in Vienna our, our education was Renaissance, Italian Renaissance, and Byzantine classic, was before and though? Byzantine was before and after, and it's uh -huh. still it's still alive. It's Byzantine culture or painting has never stopped producing, whereas the Renaissance turned into Gothic, into you know Rococo, into Romantic, into all kinds of styles, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean when you think. Uh, Renaissance was only uh, maybe hundred years. Period. So, so with Byzantine, yeah. that was before, yeah. and it stayed after. It, is Istanbul yes. the place to go see that? And Istanbul is uh, used to be the the emperor seat. You know, uh, Constantinople was the 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 Eastern Empire of the Byzantine world for. Where do you think you would go now to go see like newer Byzantine art? Uh, anywhere really. And if you go to Greek churches, if you mm -hmm. go to Russian churches, uh, uh, Greek, they kept the tradition up. They have uh, schools of monks that paint icons, for instance, traditionally with all their, all their formulas and so on. Because it's, it's a style uh, that is almost prescribed. Uh, they they have formulas for it mm -hmm. and you cannot break away from those things it's you know you cannot paint a saint freestyle you have to do it that way that way that mm -hmm. way and the clothing and the this and the that so it's it's uh, it's uh, that's been the tradition very rigid Did you see that piece? Mm -hmm. oh the you mean well, one of the pieces that I was really yeah. curious about was this one right here. I don't remember this one from last time. I don't know no, this, this is also new. Uh, the, the, these two belong to each other. This one looks kind of they, violet. Is there well, something it happening is, in there? Yes, it is. Ukraine started. 
the Russians in Solidarity with Ukraine. So it's uh, solidarity with Ukraine. And then the first, you know, the, the war wasn't over. Spring came and so it's the spring in Ukraine, the first spring, now we are in the second. So, so it's, uh, uh, I painted this out, out of my... What, what made you want to paint that about Ukraine? Because it bothered me so much, you know. Uh, I lived in, in uh, uh, always, in Austria was, was surrounded uh, towards east and, and, and southeast and uh, northeast by the, by the Iron Curtain countries. And that was, uh, you know, until way in the, in the you know, all, all my life really. Uh, whenever you travel through Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, Czechoslovakia, so it was always Iron Curtain and it was a total different feeling of, uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've had some stories with my art getting through from Greece back to Europe, driving uh, that uh, the, the uh, you know communism and, and uh, was always uh, something not very healthy for me. Uh, the uh, one border crossing I remember uh, was uh, I had big paintings on top of the car in plastic sheets wrapped from the weather and you could see through the clear plastic what it was and I thought well you know you go, you go to the customs people and uh, say well I had lists of all the works always and they would say yes okay 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 check 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 and then they said what is this and I said well don't you see those are three paintings big paintings up on the roof this guy pulled out a pocket knife and went and sliced my painting through the plastic. I I almost you know lost it there. So it was he, just it was, to he was the just plastic? he was just nasty, just mean. Mm. Well, do you think it was showing, an accident? Like he was trying to cut no, the plastic? No, it was no accident. That was on purpose because oh he was a, a mean son of a gun. It was really terrible. And uh, that was I, trying to cross the border up in from Austria Greece, from Greece into Yugoslavia. Oh, into Yugoslavia. And uh, you know. In those days, uh, things became easier when uh, the Euro, uh, Euro uh, country got together and uh, you didn't have to stop at borders anymore and you had one currency and all this was... was uh, now it's much easier than it used to be, but it was always a... How long did it stay difficult like that for? Oh, it was uh, all through the 80s. I mean, I, I left in, in 93. To come to the states, so it was until then. Was that what brought you over here? Was just less oppressive government? Or well, uh, you don't need to. You don't need a passport when you go into West Virginia from here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's it's really a free country in this in this sense, and and uh, one currency, and they all speak the same language. So you know, it's 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 really fantastic difference. You, you could breathe when you entered Austria, coming up from Yugoslavia, could say, ah, you know, it's a free country. Was it, uh, who was in control of Yugoslavia? Was it just a corrupt Yugoslavian government? Uh, well, or? It, uh, it was still Tito during the time. Uh, he was the, uh, the marshal who then took over. It was a very, he was like a Mr. Putin nowadays, mm. you know, very strong man. And everything was under his iron rule and uh, that was that was just not a very good good time so do you see similarities between what's happening now and, yeah. and what happened then oh definitely uh, i mean f first of all i was born during during the second world war and uh to go through a, a situation like like we all did under hitler is exactly what is happening now. It's it's like a replay of the old, the old games, mm -hmm. the old mentality, the old thinking, the old using people for you know, and the carelessness about lives. I mean, total total uh, single-minded, uh, crazy. I thought yeah. in my lifetime I would not have to face things like this again, you know, because we we had a, 
a difficult childhood and, and the years after the war were not, were really not funny. So what do you think about uh, children now, did, you know, they're not tough like children used to be yeah. a couple of generations ago or generations before that. And uh, I'm always wondering what, what would happen and uh, you know, if wartime were to come to America and uh, a bunch of kids who don't know anything outside of their cell phones are going to be, you know, like, what's that, what's that world going yeah, to look like? Well, this, is, this is true, but anyway, warfare is totally different now. Yeah. Than it is, I mean, we, uh, uh, you know, you have the drones. Mm. Yeah. You don't know what, what hit you when it comes, but you're gone. You know, and, and, and then the nuclear threats and then all the, the new type of uh, biological warfare and all this kind of nonsense. This is there's, there's a it's lot really a, a lot of different, different... Yeah, technological uh, warfare, technological, computer systems. Oh, everything. Every, every, yeah, it's totally new. So you're here uh, up in this place, it seems like secluded, away uh, from all of that. Yes, is, it is. It's, so, a, it's, it's a real island. So do you, situation. do you use the internet a lot whenever you're doing your artistic practices or never. You, never? I don't have a computer, I don't go near a computer, I don't, uh, you know, go go into any, it, it annoys me very, too much, I, I don't have patience for computers. CNN News. Uh, yeah, I do like to catch up, uh, catch up on the news, on the news at least BBC yeah. and, and uh, uh -huh. uh, to at least know what happens out there, mm -hmm. but otherwise, uh, you know, and then I come here and I digest the news, because I do uh, want to be in a, in a contemporary situation too, mm -hmm. and this is why I react then to news like, like I did here. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, those are paintings, for instance, also based on, on news, the last flight out of uh, Afghanistan. Mm. You know, after the uh, U.S. Uh, troops withdrew, uh, all these people on the ground that wanted to get on the planes and stuff it was pretty dramatic. This reminds me of uh, like a graveyard. Yeah, or, well, or gravestones. Yeah, if you think of the the poor uh, Afghan women nowadays, you know what they go through. Uh, no, no future hopes unless the whole thing changes, which won't easily. And this is another one uh, painting on the on the subject of all the uh, refugees that uh, come across the Mediterranean Sea from North Africa or from Turkey or from you know into into Greece or into mm -hmm. Italy, and so many have been drown drowning you know over over because they cram the boats and the boats are so poor, poorly uh, you know and they hit the storm and they go. I mean, so so it's 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 a total new, you know, the immigration problems we have it here, of course. In the yeah, uh, it's it's, same, it's gonna be, uh, it's it's a new world we are going to mm. face because climate change, droughts in in Africa, uh, poverty, food problems. Of course, all these people see the West, they think, oh wow, you know, country of freedom, of food, of jobs. So they all want to go. They want to go to Europe. They want to go to, to England. They want to come to the States. We were down in Miami uh -huh. uh, last October, uh -huh. and they said that in the last six months, they had over a quarter of a million immigrants yeah. come over just from Cuba in just the yeah. last six months yes. in one city. Yes. Yes. Um, and that there was, yeah. it was getting so densely populated yeah. that they'd be renting out balconies for $400 a month wow. just to sleep on just somebody's balcony with a tent. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was bizarre because there'd yeah. be parts of town where yeah. you could go to where it would, uh, you know, all the signs would be in yes. Spanish. Yes. At, like at, it would yeah, be sure, like yeah. you were like in a yeah. little section of Cuba. Yeah. But the one yes. of the things that I noticed is that the people who came over, yeah. they were all so hardworking. Yes. Even they weren't oh, going to yeah. let not yeah. speaking English yes. stop them. Yes. And a lot of them became successful fairly fast oh, yeah. from yes. from coming yes. over and taking oh, yes. that risk. Oh, yes. 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 Did you see it as a risk coming over to America, or did it not seem like that because of how much opportunity there was? Well, it, it's uh, it's of course they uh, they they hope for for opportunities and uh, get get decent life, uh, education, and all this. 
What about the, the difference, though, in the culture? Because, yeah. like, the churches in America are kind of bland. You know, yeah. like, I've never been to Europe, but I look at, yeah. I have books packed full of, like, yeah. European churches, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing, uh, you know? And then, you are like, you don't see, like, masterpieces of, of like, uh, yeah. like uh, stained glass oh, or sure. sculptures yeah. or paintings. Yeah. You don't yeah. see work like that. <clears throat> oh, well. In Europe, they grow up around it, and they yes. understand. They, yes. they know the names of the saints. They yes. know all these, the yes. history. Yes. In America, people... It's like if you talk to them about a certain saint or a certain style uh, of class or architecture, they're oblivious to it, so well, people the, maybe not understand the, the context. The difference in the states is uh, that all the religions have been granted, you know, freedom of, of doing their own thing. It's not uh, in Europe. Uh, most of the people are, are... I mean, there's only one kind of a Protestant breakaway church, and otherwise it's all Catholic. Mm -hmm. And so all the churches that you see in, in Germany, in uh, in the small towns, in the big towns, they are Catholic churches. Is that most because, of them? Do they not have tax exemption over uh, there? They they have arrangements with the states. For instance, a, a Catholic priest gets a salary from the state in Austria, really? like a teacher. Like yeah, they are recognized as a part of the the whole the whole community. So then other, uh, other religions wouldn't get tax exemptions. Uh, it's they, only Catholicism. Oh, they, no, they, they do. Teach they in they the teach religion in the school, so kids are brought up uh, with... Uh, and Muslims are allowed to build their, their mosques in Austria, for instance. Uh, and and they, they have the same rights. You know, uh -huh. they, 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 have, they have good systems in a way. It's, uh, of course, uh, not every Muslim is, a, is an anarchist or a... A bomber or a you know a, a cutthroat, and so uh, they they have a, a, a different tradition in those, uh, in, in and they they are fair uh, in in Germany and Sweden. My goodness, you know there are more Muslims in Sweden than almost Swedes nowadays. Yeah, I was. We were down in uh, Austin at the beginning of this year, Austin, Texas. Yes. And we were doing, a, we did a series of murals for a Muslim school oh, for, for their playground. Yes. I and um, uh, it was so great being able to talk to the Muslim yes. people there. Yeah. And uh, um, it was called Austin Peace Academy. Uh -huh. And so, uh, uh -huh. like, because around here, it's like uh, kind of segregated and a lot of the people, they yeah. don't have a lot of uh, experience with yeah. culture outside of this of area. They yeah, haven't because traveled. they've never been in Frostburg even, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes, and, and, but yeah. it was refreshing to go down there and, and meet people who, who people back home would say something bad about and, and yeah. nothing but good experiences yes. and learning about the culture and, and it's one of the fastest growing religions in the world now yeah, and it, it seems like those uh like and all the like a lot of the american baptists and all that mm -hmm. are declining in their population yes but the stricter ones like the amish the yes. muslim and all them they're all increasing they're they're still hanging and i'm wondering what is yes. it that's making the that like the stricter ones yeah. somehow gain in population do you think yeah. it's because people have like this sense of like the government doesn't have it figured out, so I need to go with somebody who does? Or yeah. what could it be that... that... Uh, you know, uh, the press has been pretty tough on following up uh, the abuses in, in churches. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, and the, and the Catholics and the Protestant churches have suffered a great deal because of that. Because the, the mm -hmm. exposure, but on the other hand, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. And it, it shouldn't uh, exist, you know. They, mm -hmm. So th there's been this this uh, undercurrent of, of weakness or of uh, self uh, hurt, and that hasn't helped. But there is plenty of uh, there are plenty of good priests and good uh, you know uh, good people around that try to still. It seems like your uh, work uh, kind on. of shows that, especially with this painting over yeah, here, sure. where it shows about yeah. the, like the, the positivity yeah. and the unity between all the religions. Yes, absolutely. That's what, 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 I, what I did this painting for. Uh, Penny and I have been in Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. first time for Penny, and uh, I tried to show her all this, all this uh, you know, the different cultures and the different areas. and. Uh, and just as we got home again from the trip, uh, Beirut was up in flames again, and uh, you know, uh, Lebanon uh, big time uh, war started, uh, and uh, I had lived in Turkey for so long, 
that this was always a, a, a problem in, mm -hmm. the, in the Middle East. And I, I, I said to Benny, look, here, here they go again. Will they not ever get it uh, together and, and straighten? Uh, and uh, so I, I thought, well, I've got to react to that and paint that painting by just simply showing that even, you know, all the religions have a good meaning behind it, a good purpose. They, mm -hmm. they want to do uh, something for the people, the Muslims and the Jews and the Catholics and whatever church there is. Uh, if uh, the disagreeing factors are maybe only 5% or so of, of their, you know, where they're hard-headed or mm -hmm. uh, their, 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 their angles about uh, women or about uh, laws, church, uh, the, the, the Sharia laws and stuff like that for the Muslims. And in, in, so I came up with this idea of saying, well, those are the, you know, the, the, the factors that they, they, they can't uh, get through why don't you throw those things out and concentrate on the 95% that they are all, the they all mean the same thing. They all want mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Get them together and, you know, form a new unity. Yep. People are so still fighting uh, <coughs> anyway. over the, like, the possession of Temple Mount or like oh, the Dome oh, of Ra. Uh, and, people uh, are uh, people are people. It's you know? been thousands I mean, of years. You you, you will been... always have this. Uh, I mean, in any community. I mean, even you know, in families, you have the same situation. There is always this 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 element of of, of somebody who does not want to agree. Somebody wants to be a, a sore head or a, a, a square head or whatever it is. And uh, you have to get through that and uh, or over that and uh, you know be be like a Jimmy Carter. Hmm. Well, how is that like a Jimmy Carter? Well, he, he's been helping in the, all his life, being a, an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's uh, of all the presidents that we, that I've ever heard of and an and experienced. I mean, he was uh, he is some very special person because he really meant it. Uh, he, he, had no, he had no uh, mm -hmm. he had no personal interest other than the the good for his people, his mm -hmm. and, and worldwide. Do you yeah. think that that's what most yeah. art is about? Is the artist just trying to find, uh, like, idealize the reality and, and find uh, ways to, like, yeah. find the greater good to things? Or, or uh, If he can, yes, he should. <laughs> yes. So what, yes. Do you, what do you think about... I mean, I'm, I'm not interested in, uh, you know, uh, in... in, in Making expensive artwork and selling it and set myself up and and uh, you know going to business. I I'm the worst businessman from that point of view. Mm -hmm. But I I care for the works because they they are kind of my children. Uh, they have to they, once they are painted. You know they are they are out in the world. They have to live their own life. Uh, these paintings will be watched and seen. Uh, if it so happens, and they have to s radiate their own messages. So, do you step back what, mid painting and take time just to look at it while it's in progress, or do you normally just go straight? Uh, it? Well, it depends on how how strong and clear the ideas that I have when when I started. But when there are certain urgent motives like this, or you know, this was. Going back to the beginning of, of things, creation mm -hmm. times, you know, thinking my God, you know, if if you think uh, of God, mm -hmm. what kind of a person or uh, thing he is, that he had in his mind all the plan of setting up not just us people and the animals and the trees and the flowers and the mountains and the, but the whole universe. I mean, how, how on earth did he get the idea to set up a universe and plan it out to the, uh, and, and, and to design uh, dinosaurs that have this, you know, the same kind of skeleton that we have, the same kind of, uh, you know, similar functioning 
uh, machinery inside. You know, we have a lung, we have a heart, we have uh, blood vessels, we take oxygen, we uh, need food and so forth. I mean, to, to plan all this out and lay it all out, uh, I, I'm just always baffled. In this case, I was wondering about the fact, uh, you know, originally there was darkness. Then there came light. Mm -hmm. Then uh, separ uh, the, the, the universe was big, the stars were set up. And then there is an earth and darkness was separated from the light, day and night. And then the first forms of life appear, you know, uh, out of the water and in uh, just the, the, the energy. I mean, it's, uh, it's mind boggling to me. Mm -hmm. So you see the world as more of a, a conscious effort to design by some creator, or you think it, uh, there's, yeah, it was well, accidental, or you think it's too, it too could, perfect it, to be it, accidental? It couldn't be an accident. There is someone, a big daddy somewhere up there, who's sort of who who who, who does everything and knows everything, and you know, and lets you dangle at times and say, "You were a bad boy. Here, come on." straighten up, come back to the earth, you know, put your, your feet on the ground and, and so forth. I mean, this is, you know, we, we know all this. We mm -hmm. have a conscience, which is uh, the separation from animals. Uh, uh, animals don't have a conscience, but we can think about it and we can, we can work on it, on, on these kind of issues and then make things better. So it's it, it's a program that we are we are we are on, and we are we are in not good shape when we ignore it. You know that. Yeah, that's yeah I'll, I think of uh, um, like as if whenever you're not aligned with the nature of the universe, mm -hmm. things start breaking before their time to break. Oh, absolutely. And they'll start falling apart before they're supposed uh, before, to fall yeah, apart. Oh, absolutely. And, um, absolutely. And uh, it, it's easier to get lost. And then, yes. But, uh, yes. but by yes. somehow finding a way to work in harmony with yeah. whatever the nature of the universe is, you yeah. will somehow harmonize. And then that, yeah. that allows you to in increase your the vibrancy and the well, resonance you, of your you frequency. You said it beautifully, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yes, and I said, think it allows yes. for like a, not necessarily a longer life, no, but a, but a deeper a con life. A continuation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had a, a visitor in, in Greece, a French young man, who had, uh, uh, with his girlfriend, we lived on the beach and uh, we met and he uh, explained, he said uh, he had one year to live, he had cancer. And his parents uh, got together and sent him on a world tour because he should see the world for, for as as much as he could. And he was very grateful for that. And uh, when he left, he said uh, one one word I never forgot: bon continuance, a good continuation. Good if you are capable of continue, don't you know? Uh, like he he was terminated. Uh, or terminal, but uh, if you're, you know, in, in your heart, so what? And that stuck to my mind, you know, uh, to to keep on on the same groove, in the same mindset, in the same uh, harmony with so things. With this continuation, yeah. Do you think it's you're thinking about the past, and we're trying to arrange it in some sort of way that makes it? Uh, the future are better possible. Uh, true enough. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, there is no future without the past. I mean, you've, uh, I, I always look backwards and forwards. I don't, uh, I don't uh, uh, stop in, in the middle and then just, you know. Yeah, I mean, because I yeah, see, of course. if I see someone's artwork, I can kind of tell right away if mm. they don't know anything about art history. Yes. Because it'll be kind of bland and it yes. won't have that, like, that continuity of like, oh, you're yeah. picking up where the last generation yes. left off. Because yes. you could... If you oh, trace well, it back, you could see like, oh, well, they picked up where they left yeah, off yeah. and they brought the yeah, idea yeah. a little bit further. Yeah. And they said, oh, wait, you guys took it too far. We'll bring it back. And then people I said, no, you didn't yeah. take it far enough. We'll I, push it off the edge. Uh, I, I was, uh, I mean, this is probably what I learned in, in, my, in my young years in the, at the academy or during my studies. Uh, I was trying to expose myself to all the styles in painting, in architecture, in, uh, you know, culture. 
musically as well and uh, uh, learn from each period, you know, so Renaissance was of course important, but it wasn't the only thing. I wanted to go back to antiquity, I wanted to go to Greece, I wanted to see how the Greeks were thinking, how did they come up with their ideals of, of mm -hmm. uh, their human bodies and their, their thinking and their poetry and their plays and all. And, uh, but at the same time, I also looked at anything very uh, contemporary. I, I, you know, spent a lot of time in, 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 in modern uh, music circles uh, that w was doing uh, experimental music. Uh, uh, John Cage uh, was then uh, a, a new light in the, in the ultra-modern music world, American, New Yorker. And uh, of course, all, all the composers, uh, you know, that, that led up to serial music and uh, uh, electronic music and all, all these kind of things, synthetic music. And uh, that all was uh, trying to find out all the different styles and different poles and the different reasons behind why. It wasn't just to try to be something different. It was something more substantial about it. And uh, this uh, you know, meditative or deeper or uh, analytical, and and this is what what I was working all my all my young years. Yeah, some people and, don't, uh, don't try to be different, and they'll try yeah. to like, uh, and they'll just be absurd to be different. Yeah. Uh, I but know. but I some know. people will try to be different, and then it's like I want to uh, expand or yeah. explore yeah. on yeah. whatever somebody else before me did. Yeah. It's like I, I had a, a show. I had a show in London. Uh, and I was about 25 or 26, and uh, uh, good gallery, the uh, Austrian embassy gave me a second opening after the gallery opening another day, and uh, so I thought, oh wow, well, this is a, a good start. And the newspaper people came in, and one of the critics wanted to meet the artist. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, he uh, came in and I was asking, who is the artist, where is the artist? And I was pointed out to him and they came over and he said, you mean you did all this? This is the work of an old man, of a lifetime's work that you show here. How on earth do, did you do all this? Uh, I just said, well, this is the produce of, you know, uh, a very wide angle approach, culturally. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was baffled. Uh, he couldn't believe it. He said, uh, I, I expected to see an old man. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, eh, well, Penny, I Penny really I wants to different. take a look at this. That, one. So and this was just so different yeah, so, when I saw it. Uh, uh, it's true. Yeah. You know, so I, I give myself, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, problems. Uh, like, how do you paint creation? You know, how yeah, you that's paint, a big uh, task. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you paint, how do you paint time? That's a, that's a good question. So, uh, it is. I mean, when you think time, you know, especially as, as you, uh, as I grow older and older, uh, that thought sneaks in and they think, you know, my God, yes, you know, now I'm 80 and think of, uh, uh, you know, how much time have you got? What have you done in your life? What have you accomplished? What have you, what have you not done yet? So this is so the passing of time? It's, the pa it's time itself, just time. Mm -hmm. Of course, passing of time. I mean, time is, is something very fluid. It mm -hmm. never, uh, it's, you can't grasp it, you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming, it's here, it's gone. Uh, it's it's a, a, a permanent flu uh, of flux, you know, uh, always running. Uh, and that went on forever universally, culturally, all, all, uh, I mean, we, we people are so silly, if you think. Here yeah, we want to build the tallest buildings, the strongest, uh, you know, castles, the, the, the best art, the best <coughs> things, and yet it's so superficial, <coughs> because, you know, in 100,000 years, or in 1,000 years, or in 10 years, it crumbles, it falls apart. Yeah, okay. And uh, the, the problem now with the, 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 the late art uh, development is totally ignoring the fact of time. 
of durability of making things they, they just do uh you know things for the moment things for the moment out there splash gone splash gone sensation gone finished you know it, uh, it's it's something missing there for yeah me. sensationally yeah. sensationalism is definitely taking the place yeah. of meaning yes I, mean, I got a couple questions about this first off have yeah. you ever heard the phrase that uh, uh about like ge well it's about geometry and about uh -huh. how geometry like uh is emanates throughout all different types of art forms and it sure says does. uh <clears throat> yes. architecture is yes. geometry in space yes. and music is geometry in time yes have you heard that it's, before? It's, it's, it's a fact, yes, of course. This is the one, Sarah. this is the piece that put me on to you and your work. Yeah. I was in the Gilchrist, uh -huh. uh, babysitting nice. the gallery for them, because they were like, uh, Marley and I used to go down there and, and volunteer to go like, yes, I know. to watch. Yes. And so I saw this piece, uh -huh. and I was just like inspecting it, and I was like, yeah. I have never seen anything like this piece before. Yeah. And then I saw this one. Uh -huh. And then that made, because I was oh, well, oh, well, that, that's, a, that's... He has that, a humor. So I, I do have, yeah, I have to sometimes... The first barbecue. Do something like, lighter. Uh, the first barbecue. And what year did you do this uh, one? Just last year, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, oh, yeah. Fun, yeah. Because that was uh, so odd that I, mean, I think you had I, done that the same year that I did a painting of Adam and Eve, almost oh yeah. in the same color. Well, there's scene. Adam and Eve over there. This one uh, in the corner, which is, uh, and I, I tried to think about before the fall, before the apple. Uh, they're still, you know, full of, full of spunk and happiness, and no, uh, no problems. All, all just. Jumping. It's like childhood. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of the concept of art parents? Actually, no. Art parents? Yeah. Parents. So, parents. Parents. So, art parents is uh, whenever an artist has, like, uh, say, for example, two artists that came before them that they really yeah. like, and they say, well, I'll study everything yeah. from this guy, everything yeah. from this guy, yeah. and combine them, that's yes. going to be my style. Yes. If you had to choose two art parents, who would they be? Oh, my goodness. That's. A hard question. I had several parents. So like art grandparents uh, and everything. Grandparents okay. and uncles and so, so yeah, who, who yeah. would be names that come to mind? Uh, Rembrandt is one of the okay. names. Uh, and on the other extreme, Paul Clay. Okay. And. Uh, a German painter named Wolz, W O L S. I, he's the only one I don't think I've heard of so far. Uh, he is. Uh, he was a very interesting uh, artist who was uh, part of the German troops when they uh, uh, conquered Paris, mm -hmm. and he stayed behind. The Germans withdrew, and he stayed and lived in Paris and uh, did a lot of very personal scribblings and, and notes and very personal style connected to Dadaism uh, and uh, because it was extremely personal uh, it talked to me a lot because uh, I thought aha he, he dared I can do that so that was he was an interesting man so okay and, uh, I walked in Paris into a gallery uh, one time, and the gallery owner looked at me and called me over and uh, said, do you see your work here? And I said, what do you mean? And it was Wolf's works, mm -hmm. and he said, you are Wolf. I said, no, you look just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt very fickle feeling. So I have a feeling I know what you're going to pick for this one, but Rembrandt or Peter Paul Rubens? Uh, not Rubens. Not Rubens. No. What did you like about Rembrandt so much? Uh, the the humanity aspect, the, the intensity of understanding people. Rubens is more like fantastical. Uh, theatrical. Rubens is yeah, he's uh, he's he's an extrovert. See, I I, I relate more to, to Rubens. I'm <laughs> well, like, Rubens I like the grandiose, flamboyant, well, grandiose, yes. flamboyant, wonderful colors, wonderful, uh, you know, gestures. Uh, I've, I've seen some, uh, I mean, Rubens didn't really paint his paintings. 
He, he didn't had, paint a lot. Of, yeah, uh, he had his his whole troop of of uh, painters, you know, oh. that painted his works. He, but he, charged, he, yeah. he he did the eyes, and then he did the fine little that the finishing touches. But he did the original sketches. Yes. And those are really wonderful. Yes. He did also would do. He would charge people more if he worked on the whole piece himself. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll have sure. my assistants paint it, and yes. then you get a, but for the premium <laughs> price, I'll, I, if you want me to do every brush stroke, yeah, 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 yeah. it's going to cost yeah, you he, way more. He, he was quite fantastic, I mean, very, very enterprising. Yeah, he was one of the first artists who really kind of made that enterprise yes. thing, like, yes. like who actually did it and yeah. was very successful. And was and, very successful, yeah. he was extremely successful, yes. Okay, yes. what about yes. Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo? Uh, Leonardo, well, we're just talking about just painting. Yeah, just painting. painting. Uh, Leonardo is the more intriguing one mm -hmm. because of his, uh, again, width of knowledge. Yes. Uh, and Michelangelo is unbelievable in his craftsmanship and his understanding of the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, so so I, I would put them at the same level. They are both. I have a theory about Rem, about mm. Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, you could tell you're a painter, so you'd be able to, you, yeah. you would be able to tell. Uh, you can just tell me what you think about this. So there's a uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci. He would have where he would paint the whole entire canvas in like this brown earth tone, like yes. all the shadows. Yeah. And then he would use these light colors to just have the highlights. So, yeah. But there'd be that tonal unity where yes. where it would all be the, si yes. the same, yes. like the same color palette. Yes. Michelangelo would separate his colors to where like the shadow on the yes. yellow would be a dark yellow. Yes. The shadow on the blue would be a dark blue. Correct. It wouldn't be all earth tones. Right. So he would have like, yes. it would always be like a more of a stained glass approach where the color was separated. <laughs> yes, he had a more restricted palette. And it seems like yes. Raphael was the guy who took both of those, like that graphic cartoon you said and that it. smokiness and yes. he took the and two merged it. and merged it yes. and that changed art history forever. And that's true. So, yes. yes. Then, I guess, yeah. was there any other painter who had affected art history more than Raphael? Hmm. Well, then you have... Uh, it's difficult. The, the, it, yeah. the, the Italians uh, then trended to go, uh, you know, chiaroscuro, the, in the, the shadow is, mm -hmm. the shadow paintings. And, like uh, Caravaggio. You know, the Caravaggio, yeah. and uh, they did, you know, uh, but it seems like Raphael kind of paved the way for everybody uh, for else of, of combining the two. Titian. Yeah. Okay. Titian is another. To, one of the th things about uh, Peter Paul Rubens is yeah. he, for fun, he went and copied almost every single Titian that was ever made. True. Just to like learn how he painted. Yes. And went and, yes. Uh, yes. 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 So who you else? know, on the other hand, when you think, you know, uh, Picasso, when he showed up in Paris as a young painter, went to the Louvre and they were all sketching and, and uh, mm -hmm. studying the, the, all the paintings they saw there and they learned from that. So Picasso or Matisse? Uh, but Picasso and Matisse and, and the, I mean the whole, the whole, the whole Do you think that, the, what, the you think that Picasso, whose paintings do you like better, Picasso's or Matisse's? <laughs> they're not. They're both dead. They're so not going to offend uh, anybody. Uh, no, I, uh, with my brother we had huge arguments because I I called uh, Picasso a rascal. Uh, Picasso is a genius, incredibly creative, uh, but uh, he he allowed himself, uh, you know, a lot of. Well, he, he was very successful as a Picasso, mm -hmm. but not always. Uh, he had an incredible understanding of of uh, his figures and his his animals. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's. Is there a sound coming from the It's the radio. I think the groups. Excuse me. <laughs> I, say, I, say, I hear something coming in. Uh, the radio has. I played with it the other day and I... Oh, is it? It says snooze, Hilmar, instead of off. Yeah, yeah, so it, it, does, it, it woke up again. Did so you I'm sorry. You turn it off? That's so good. I turned it off. Okay, so I have some big questions. Yeah, now. So, so Picasso is, is a, you know, a philanderer a bit in his... Uh, an incredible gifted person with an incredible drive. 
I call him a little bit too selfish, too self, uh, self -absorbed. Uh, uh, yeah, self-absorbed and uh, almost to the point of being cruel at times. At, yeah. At, at, uh, towards his objects and his themes and his uh, uh, so, but but an incredible understanding of his 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 uh, animal pictures that he painted the, the depth of it, which goes back in my mind to uh, you know primeval mm -hmm. uh, understanding from they were very uh, primeval, you know yeah. bullfights and in his case it's still the the dragon. You know, a killer from from way way back. He's he's a very uh, strong person, but not necessarily my favorite. Uh, and Matisse is on the on the other side a bit too elegant. Yeah. Too you know too too linear. And he allows himself some uh, weaknesses because he doesn't paint the feet and the hand. Of really? his of his of his person, so that, that, that to paint feet and hands makes kind of the figure much more complete than yeah, and it tells about the character more than just and, the, yeah, you, the the yeah. pose of the hands, the pose of the hands and all, yes, So I think yeah, so so they both have their faults. That's why they are. I mean, and of course my brother always would hammer me uh, and say uh, because. <laughs> okay, so what is the meaning of art? What does art mean? Ooh. Yeah, it's an expression of living. An expression of living. Yeah. Do you believe in the afterlife? Yes. Yes. So yes. What, what happens when we die? Well, we, if we are good, we go to the upper chambers. If we are bad, we go down. It's very simple. And uh, I, I, I do believe this because uh, uh, all the, the, you know, if you had uh, death in your family, uh, you have the, what do you call it, the little, uh, I, I lost a sister when she was 12 in a car uh, accident and I was about eight then. And uh, it, it transformed all our family life and all our uh, growing up years as well because she was, uh, a wonderful young lady, uh, and uh, and she's never left. And same with uh, people that I experienced, you know, that have died. Uh, they haven't left, you know, like my first wife, my mom, my dad. You, you still, it's it's. Why you remember, and it's maybe sometimes more than remembering. So, so I believe in in the afterlife because I cannot imagine not having an afterlife. How how poor we would be, and how empty, and how how sad that situation would be. It enriches us to believe into you know something spiritual. So. Then, with with making art, do you think that whenever artists make art, some part of that is maybe to have some part of them be eternal in the physical realm? Is there something? Uh, is there anything to well, that? I mean, should be, could be, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, I always thought, you know, if I paint a painting and that's good, that painting can live its own life almost like a little person by itself, you know, and and uh, influence and uh, you know stream energy out to to the viewers as uh, you know as if it was like music or like uh, you know same same kind of thing. It's the energy that you that it has that it can radiate. If it doesn't have the, any energy, then it's it's nothing. So but, what? Uh, I try to put in a lot of energy. So what is it that you care most about uh, in the world? What 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 is what matters the most in the end? Oh my goodness! I know. I said I'm gonna do big questions. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. 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 
Peace of mind. Peace of mind and peace of, yeah, absolutely. I think that's what we... Is that what, do you think that's what everybody wants in the end, is just should. to have a peace of mind? Uh, yeah, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's very lacking and this is very important. Because if you, if you don't, if you're not at peace, I mean, you cannot uh, function right. I couldn't agree more. Helmar, thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate that's, it. Well, that's good.